Hello there. Now, if you watch yesterday's video, you'll know that I talk about using one of the Technic plates with the Technic pin holes in the middle. I think it was the 2x4 to hold up my Lego Ideas mannequin hand, which if you haven't seen, we taught Lego ASL or technically lego taught me to teach you asl but either way we went over the alphabet if you didn't want to watch the full video yesterday you can find a short on my channel the same time as this video goes out with the whole alphabet shown through this mannequin hand which is really awesome that i was able to do it with lego because it did mean completely changing up how i built the fun but enough of that today we're going over legal builds and we've got another 10 for you now i do have two legal builds that i will be showing you one at the halfway mark and one right at the end that honestly blew my mind when i found it out so you'll definitely want to stay tuned right until the end to find that out but i think without further ado let's just go take a look straight to number one enough talking let's get this video started and the first illegal building technique we have was actually featured on my fallen order diorama and that is trying to put a bracket plate with a plate underneath looping around and i'm pretty sure i've tried to use this for a few of my older mocks as well but as you can see it just doesn't go in even if you apply a bit of force you see they're both still just bone out you push back in the one by two and without trying to knock back the pack you just see they're not going in if i quickly zoom in to that position you might be able to see it a little better than me showing you a blurred close-up but the only ways that this bracket can connect to these pieces is with them going out to the left up above or out to the other side i'm not quite sure why the other three dimensions work and the underneath one doesn't as much but this is going to wear down your bricks and that does mean for our second illegal piece if i got a another bracket you can't put two brackets next to each other you can see that it's just never going to work you can't get both of them flush and you can get them at different no nope, you can't even get them at different angles well there is, I guess, a 2.5 bonus. You can get them next to each other, I know, and you can definitely get them head on if you wanted to, I guess, sandwich some sort of brick or plate combination between the two. But you can't get anything underneath a bracket. Well, that is unless you've got the partner bracket to go with it. But I just think that is very interesting how you can pretty much get them to combine any other way, but the minute you have the underside of one it just doesn't work out so next time you're building a mock be sure to remember this because as i said this was included in my fallen order diorama where i actually had the brackets like that so what i should have done was got the other bracket the one that goes down instead of up and just included it like that sat it on top it really isn't a big problem that is perfectly legal and that goes for this one or the one with the stud the other way up so it'd be a bit more like that so that is our first two out of the way and we're staying on a very similar track for this next one as i've got a few pieces to go but this sort of snot brick the one with the little indent at the front and the nice square hole at the back which you can use for a stud it is an anti-stud gap there which is very nice you can't actually get a plate down in front of it as you can see I try and put this one by one down in front of the snot brick and it's just not having any of it now that's true for plates half the time anyway but this bottom of the snot brick comes out just a bit further it's actually the exact same gap that you'd have between a plate and these brackets here if you put these on and you might see them in a few mocks there is a small small gap just between the two pieces here and that is the exact same as the distance that this snot brick sticks out by. Perhaps it'd be better if I put them around the other way. So you can see that the one by one plate does indeed fit on. And if I try and fit the next one, it fits, but it's not a very flush connection. So I don't know why Lego have done this, but for some reason you just can't put other plates in front. And it's probably to do with something having that stud there. You can definitely get a bracket underneath it for instance if we were to bring back the 
bracket from the last few you can put that underneath it and that is perfectly legal but for some reason a plate just isn't you won't see it in any other lego building or model from the recent history of course lego have definitely got a history of using illegal techniques i mean how else do they know that they're illegal unless they try them theirself and for some of these things only time will tell but it does mean that if you were to try and get a brick in front of it whilst that does look fine and they went in smooth enough really you try and put a tile on top and that's just not happening you could lip it over the lego logo on top in fact that doesn't even have a lego oh it does have a lego logo i thought that was a clear stud for a second there and i was wondering what that connects to but it isn't just because of the bottom for this one but it's actually because of the stud on the side sticks out more than the base so if the base wasn't a problem even the stud just really wouldn't work and you can't get any sort of bricks on top or below it so as you can see if we go the opposite way and start off with this tile then it's not going to clip in properly because there's just not enough space for each of the bricks now we're moving away from these bricks that is the illegal technique three and four and we are absolutely storming through these but the next technique is one you might not know because you may have been tricked to thinking that lego have indeed included this in their sets but as you can see we have a one by one tile with the clip variant on top the modified piece and we have a one by one tile with a groove now you might think that these two can't go together but you'll realize very quickly into trying to put them together that they just don't fit there's not enough flexibility in each of the edges of the lego clips and actually I don't think I can even force this in because I think it's going to end up breaking one of the pieces. Now, Lego have never included this in any of their sets, at least not to my knowledge. I don't think they've ever slipped up on this because the actual piece that you should be including is this one by one clip piece with the Lego hand element on the end rather than the clip that blends itself into the tile. And once you've got this piece in it, you can clip a tile in it pretty easily. I mean, you saw my struggle with the other one. That went in pretty smoothly. And this is a completely legal technique. We are halfway through the video already. I know it's flying by so quickly. But we'll keep this for now. Put this red one to the side. Because our next illegal technique, once again, we're sort of partnering up these early ones here, is if you were to get a clip on the other side and make it look like a TIE Fighter. There's technically nothing wrong with this exact model, but if you were to clip it to any other Lego bricks, put any stress on that top one, and to be fair, two clips on one tile is enough stress as it is. So I'm sure Lego would class this as an illegal technique, but if you were to attach even just a plate or a stud or anything to this top one, you're putting too much stress on this tile onto the clips, you're going to end up with a few broken clips and no one likes that because I don't remember the last time these clips were on the pad wall and now we've got the boxes they're not going to be that easy to replace and even just clipping a tile in here full stop is definitely questionable as to whether it might break one of the clips so definitely acknowledge the fact that you might end up with a broken clip if you're using them for this design but the next one is very very interesting we end up with this pile of bricks here which does look very fancy but we'll put this to the side for now and just get a few of the studs round because this is a technique i've only recently seen it's definitely not a recent technique but i haven't really seen this what you want to do is put the antenna in the middle there and sandwich that sort of ball on the end of the antenna there's a little ball which can go in minifigures hands and you want to sandwich that between the other four studs so just how complicated this is should tell you that it is indeed going to be illegal and I can't actually put this last stud down without clipping it over the antenna so already there's not enough space for the antenna between them so this shouldn't be going in and even now that there is the studs end up popping off bouncing away and let me get another one if you remember my video talking about the mess that Lego makes I completely forgot to mention all the studs and that that I find everywhere. 
but this is really going to hurt your Lego bricks. I'm hurting my bricks on camera here so that you don't have to. But as you've seen, the bricks do have a chance of popping off. I mean, I don't really know what technique this is meant to represent. I don't really know what you can get from this, but as you can see, you're going to snap the antenna, possibly even the base of the antenna if you put it the wrong way round. And you do risk, I should probably point that away from my face, you do risk the studs popping off and firing into no man's land. I just really wouldn't recommend this. I can't even remember where I saw this technique now because I don't know what this would be used for. There's so many other bracket pieces to get studs on the side. I guess if you've just got everything supported by four very thin legs, this would be useful, but I don't see any of you using this. And please don't because not only is it a danger to the bricks, it's actually a danger to yourself. Now on to another illegal technique. I've done this to keep the pieces together, but this is actually an illegal technique. Now, if this were non-translucent elements, this would be perfectly legal. A bar with a cone on it, you're not going to damage much. And luckily, these two pieces that I've got actually work a little well together. But the plastic that LEGO make their translucent parts out of is not very well suited to go together i mean if they do they do tend to break and that's why we don't get many translucent minifigure parts even if we do it's exclusively a head or an arm or maybe a leg or lower leg because they just couldn't add any other translucent pieces the legs have a opaque hip piece that they're connected to likewise the arms usually are connected to an opaque body with opaque hands and the head also has an opaque body with an opaque headpiece, perhaps with a few translucent elements on it. But overall, the helmet or hair tends to be on the more opaque side. So you can actually connect to translucent elements. And this is recommended for near enough every single piece. So translucent elements are like studs and everything. And this could possibly be why the lights, for instance, the UCS Moss Eisley, an amazing set. I've turned it into a diorama myself just to make some space for more Lego. But on the middle of the table, the lights are made with a white stud with a translucent piece on top. And this is completely just for the test of time so that the pieces last longer than they would if it was a translucent stud with a translucent tile on top because they're just not made to be together. So it is an illegal technique. Lego have definitely used this a few times. You can definitely catch Lego using this even in a few of their newer sets because I'm sure it's something that goes under the radar. But it does make the both translucent elements very brittle, easier to snap. And if you can avoid it, I would recommend not putting any two translucent pieces together. So I will no longer put these together. These can stay apart for when I sort them back into their drawers. And this sort of comes from my own work because when you're using studio which is owned by bricklink which is owned by lego so it's an official lego designer for the computer you sort of forget how a few pieces work now in one of my recent idea submissions i have included these two slopes to pair up and sort of fill in the gap between the underneath i do believe you could probably get it in at some angle but I do have these pieces merged. I think it was to make a miniature space explorer for one of the displays of one of my space sets. Be sure to check them out in the comments. I'll leave a link to my profile. But as you can see, they just don't go together. So this is more of a cautionary tale for when you're using Studio or any other online designer or when you're just drawing different models, as I have for all of these illegal techniques. I tend to just mock up a drawing, I'm sure I'll put them on screen for your amusement, and yet they just don't go together. I mean, anyone that's built Lego with slopes knows that these don't go together, but when you're using something like Studio, just be careful, make sure they're not overlapping. I believe they have a tab or something you can turn on that will show you if you do have any overlapping bricks. I really should turn that on a lot more but when you're actually designing the set it's much easier to have it off so be careful you don't fall into any traps like I have and accidentally include illegal techniques. Now we're on to illegal technique number 10 there is one more legal technique that I will be showing off at the end that absolutely blew my mind so definitely stay tuned for that but as you can see 
This illegal technique has been used for so many different scale elements, dragon elements, even just chainmail in the odd sort of medieval set. And I've actually been unable to connect hands to the top two the way the connections are, they just don't fit. But as you can see, I've included six hands attached to the underside of this 2x3 plate in a very nice colour. I tried to pick out a load of my colourful elements for this video and I really do like this colour. I'm a big fan of this sort of bluish green but as you can see this is indeed an illegal technique. Why else would it be in the video besides I guess the next one which is a completely legal technique but this is an illegal technique and it's not because of what you might think. The hands I mean, I'm sure if you attach them to anything, they would be stressed out, but the hands aren't stressing each other out here. They fit near enough perfectly into the hand of the one below it, so there's no stress there. The legal technique is actually just because there are hands here alone. Now, Lego consider a minifigure to be made of four parts, and if you've gone to a Lego store, built a minifigure in the builder minifigure section, you'll know that the four parts are the legs, which include two legs and a hip piece, the torso, which includes the torso itself, two arms and two hands. The head, which is just the head, and then a hair piece, which is either hair or a hat. And they are the four pieces that make up a minifigure. So this would be the equivalent of taking the antenna piece and trying to pop that middle piece out, which I have done for a droid's back. Again, if you're breaking pieces apart, there is a chance that they will break and... It's not exactly a low chance, so Lego recommends you keep pieces built, and much like the antenna counts as one piece, this here counts as, what, a fifth of a piece? So it's nothing that you actually find Lego doing. There was a set a while back which included a wardrobe, and in the official images, they didn't include the hands, because of course it would look better. But when the instructions rolled round and you built the actual set, all of the torsos and arms did include hands for the jackets, which did look a bit morbid because you just had a bunch of torsos with hands hanging on a row, but it is the legal way of doing it because if you do remove arms and hands, there is a chance of cracking on the torso and arms. In fact, Star Wars I've been lucky with and not featured any, but when I was rebuilding a few of my older minifigures, especially the Power Miners, I saw so many cracked arms where I changed out hands and probably weren't even using completely Lego hands at the time. I was just swapping them out with all the other different ones that I've got from all my other different compatible figures and it does lead to some cracking over time so be sure that if you have a bunch of spare hands I guess you can buy them on Bricklink I'm pretty sure you can buy hands and arms on Bricklink Bricklink's going through some changes that is a whole video in itself I feel like each of these videos is planning out what I'll do tomorrow I'm not making the Bricklink video tomorrow I have no idea what I'll be doing tomorrow yet, so stay tuned, subscribe for a nice surprise. But I'm not sure if they'll continue selling hands and arms. I see that a load of people, perhaps with other broken pieces, will only want to sell the elements, but perhaps they'll merge them into the torsos themselves. That would be, well, not very fun for people trying to sell, sell specific elements. But once again, Video for another time, a story for another time. Let's get on to the final build of this video, the legal technique, which is including these pieces here. Now, I'm unsure if I'll be able to show it off completely in the video, so what I'll do instead is provide an image in the bottom right of your screen, or perhaps just over to the right side, because these pieces line up perfectly with a base plate. Well, you could argue that all Lego lines up perfectly with a base plate as long as the stud connections are lined up. But I mean, this piece on the left here sits on the base plate and it's flush with the bottom of the right hand side. I've used the translucent element so that hopefully in the picture you can see it a little bit better than I'm explaining it. But what happens is because you're raising the brick on the right by it so much and I wonder if actually this is an illegal technique because it's got a stud next to the one on the left. So I wonder how Lego have considered this an illegal and legal technique, but I guess it really depends what you're using it for. Perhaps it's just on the top of it, or perhaps it's because the plate would interfere with the stud. So I'll definitely do a bit more research on that if you know why this is legal and the other one is illegal, because I've seen the majority of people saying that for both of these. Do let me know down in the comments, perhaps the plate itself isn't illegal 
and it's just the stud that goes up past the stud on the slot brick. But either way, this does fit nicely on a base plate and helps if you are trying to build outside your base plate, expand it a little bit, and this is the only technique you will need. And then, of course, you've got a brick's height on the outside. It does offset your studs a little bit. They are still in system as far as the width is concerned. It's just mainly the height that would be different. But again, it's an awesome technique. And as you can see in the image, one last time I'll blast it on screen. It does work with the base plates. So as I said, I'm not quite sure why this one works, but the other one doesn't where if you just were to include the plate besides it, I do think that is a mistake on my behalf. And it's actually two plates that should be included there rather than the one. So do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Once again, do subscribe. We are so close to 700 subscribers. In fact, by the time these videos go out, I don't know when we're going to have hit it because I'm recording this the day before. We might have hit 700 subscribers already. That is very wishful thinking on my behalf. But if we have, that is amazing. If not, do subscribe. Make sure we hit 700. And even if we hit 700, we're going for 800 next month. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on more awesome LEGO content. And may the bricks be with you always. Thank you.